What's up, Wani? Not much, man. Chilling. Chilling. Relaxing, enjoying it. Where, where you at right now? I'm in Dayton right now. I'm in Ohio. That's home, right? Yeah, it's home for me. What about you? I am in my temporary home. I'm in Morgantown right now. Oh, okay, okay. Do you uh do you work out by yourself back there or do you got somebody who trains you? Because I've seen some of your stuff that we'll, you know, probably touch on with your YouTube and everything. Um, you know, you got different guys working you out, but like right now, do you got anybody working you out? Yeah, I got a trainer. Uh, that's that's usually uh, me and the trainer. Uh, I got two of them that I work with in Dayton. Um, I usually just alternate between both, but uh, yeah, that's what I do. I, I like to work out by myself, though, honestly, just because probably just because I feel like it gives me, uh, you know, as a competitor, I'm trying to get get ahead, and I don't really want to, you know, get my secrets out and stuff. So you know, I work out every now and then, but at a certain point, I like to lock in and just you know go by myself and you know try to try to outdo myself. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Did you do that growing up? Was that like pretty much always just you in the gym by yourself? Uh, a lot of times, yeah, because I started off working out with my dad. But uh, I had a couple yeah. friends around my age that worked out with me too. And, you know, throughout the workout, I was always trying to, you know, it was always competition for me. But I got to a point where I was like, man, I, I feel like guys are stealing my moves, you know. And that was a <laughs> thing for me when I was young because I was like, I was always trying stuff new. So I, I I would work out with guys, and I was like, man, he's taking my moves. So it's like, man, I got to go by myself because I don't want everybody knowing what I'm, what I'm working on or, you know, trying to figure out how to guard me. So that's kind of when I picked that up. But I found out we were getting on this Zoom. Like, I, I started doing a little bit more research. And, uh, you know, I found out something about um, mm -hmm. being on a, a TV show or something. Like, <laughs> doing some bodybuilding as a kid. What was that? Like, tell me what that was about. Oh, man. Uh... Yeah, so the Ellen Ellen DeGeneres show, um, it is like soccer moms. It's like their favorite show. And when I was like 12, 11, maybe even uh -huh. younger than that, um, I went on there. I was doing like when I was seven, eight, nine, like I was – all I did was just ball handling workouts. Um, and my dad showed me Pistol Pete. Like I got obsessed with it. Uh, and I didn't, you know, I knew I liked basketball, but I wasn't obviously super, super serious at seven. Um, but I, I could, I could dribble a little bit and somehow or another, uh, Helen DeGeneres found it and I ended up on the show. That was wild. It was a crazy experience, but, uh, but it actually worked against me. Right. Because as a, then all of a sudden after that, um, it was okay. I don't, I don't just want to be a dribbler. I want to be a you know, a basketball player, right? And you, you get into you get into AAU, start getting older. And now that target on your back is is, you know, for for other guys, it's like, all right, this kid's got hype to his name, but you know, he's gonna have to prove it to me, blah, blah, blah. So you're always kind of fighting that. Um and I didn't really realize that when I went on it when I was like eleven years old. Uh but now I've I've learned to kind of enjoy that because you know, there's there's always going to be people who doubt, people who hate, whatever. You know that, and right. you just got to prove people wrong. But yeah, that was that was a crazy experience, and and yeah, that that gets brought up pretty often. Right. I'm glad I'm glad you expanded on that because that kind of bring brought me to my next thing. I wanted to ask you, um, just with with all the hype, you know, coming out of high school, and you know, with all the the media and everything. Um, you know, yeah, it puts a target on your back for sure. I look back at when I came out of high school, we didn't have all of that. You know, we had, we didn't get Instagram and Twitter until I was in college. So, you know, I just kind of wonder what it would have been like to kind of be under the spotlight at such a young age. But mixed with all of that, how do you feel like uh, your first year of college was? You know, what, what with your expectations as, you know, for me, with the hype I had, I felt like college was going to be, Personally, I thought it would be a little easier than it was. And it kind of, I hit like a roadblock because it was like, you know, like, dang, everybody's hyping me up. I'm this, I'm that. They're telling me they got predictions for what they think I'm going to do in the conference, this, this, and that. But when I get there, it's like, man, these guys are seniors. They've been here. They've been doing it. So it's not as easy as I thought. So <clears throat> being in a similar situation, how did, how did you feel about that coming in? So I had, I had a decision to make just like everybody else in terms of when I got to the college level, um, you know, 
the decision was is do we go, you know, below the power five? You know, do we do we choose a school, whether it's a mid-major or something like that, um, you know, in a conference that lets their guards really go uh, and try to put up, you know, big numbers. So go in there and try to average 20 at some point in your career at a mid-major, and then you get a, you know, you get your shot. Because, and you know this, choosing your college is really trying to choose where your professional route, you know, is going to go. So for me, there was two options, either go to a mid, uh, or go to a different school, um, you know, out of the power five, really, where it's more guard heavy oriented, where we're trying to put up numbers or go to a power five and try to win. Um, and I'm a competitor, like I'm extremely just like you, I'm competitive. Um, and, you know, with the with the hype or whatever you want to call it, just like, like you had coming into college, I wanted to, and it might be an ego thing, like, uh, I'm not even going to run away from it because you see people you know in the comment section saying oh it's it's an ego thing he he kind of forced it trying to go to a uh to a you know big 12 school uh he's out of his league blah blah he's not gonna be able to do this and that drove me even more um and my expectations for myself then became really high my expectation was let's go to west virginia where play for a hall of fame coach um and maybe we're not going to put up those numbers early uh, that we expected, but we're here to build something long term and win. You know, I, I didn't I didn't choose a school that you know was a you know quick and easy option. I chose the route, as you know, playing for West Virginia and Coach Hugs. That's going to test you every single day. So for me, yeah, expectations. I haven't nearly I haven't even sniffed the expectations that I had for myself in my first two years. Um, and at first, you know, that's a tough pill to swallow because we're competitors and we, we constantly want to be, you know, the guy and all that stuff. But I had to kind of shift my focus into being a competitor that brings the best out of everybody around them, worries less about himself and just tries to win. So in, in terms of that, we had a 20 win season last year. We didn't even get a chance to play in the, in the NCAA tournament. So you can speculate all you want on what we would have done. But I, I do believe we would have went deep um, and had a real shot at the whole thing. So um, now it's just about kind of gearing up and, and uh, proving people wrong again next year um, on a personal and team, you know, basis. And I'm sure that was similar for you, right? It was it constantly you pro pro trying to prove people wrong growing up? No, definitely. Um, you know, I, I never felt like I got to just do uh, that I deserve. You know, I played with guys like, you know, uh, Jared Selinger, Adrian Payne, um, you know, so they were always ranked extremely high. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. you know, I just felt like I was always kind of overlooked. So um, that's kind of part of the reason I chose to go the route I went in college and stay at home because um, a lot of people expected me to go to Ohio State. You know, with that decision, I wanted to kind of create my own thing. You know, I wanted to be my, be recognized as my own player, not just good because of the guys I played with. And then coming to West Virginia, you know, I hit another roadblock. You know, my sophomore year, I went from, you know, starting to barely playing, um, just had a rough year. You know, at that, at that time, me and, me and Hugs really – couldn't get on the same – I'm not going to say we couldn't get on the same page. I didn't really know what he expected from me. Um, and as we both know, as everybody in the world knows, if you – not just with any coach, but especially with hugs, if you're not seeing eye to eye, it's going to be rough. So that's what I ran into. Um, and I was kind of – I'm not going to say I was at the same point that you are, but I was at a point where I felt like, all right, two years are done. I got two left, and I got to make a change. So – or not, I got to make a change, but I want to improve. I want to get to that level where I feel like I should be. And I got two years left. So, you know, now I'm on the hot seat. Um, so also with that, I guess that would, would have me to ask you, what is your focus? You know, what's your focus like coming into this this junior year? You know, you've you played yep. as a freshman, you know, you played as a sophomore, but now you get into the age where it's like, no matter what happens in-house, no matter what, the fans or anybody sees or doesn't see you're a junior, you know, so right. nothing matters. It's like, all right, he's had two years. So what's your focus coming into this year? You know, I'm sitting in the gym right now and about to work out, got a little lift in and I, I've changed, you know, because if you continually do the same thing over and over, 
it, you're going to get the same results. So I'm changing almost everything I do workout wise. Um, it's, it's all more game like, uh, there's a lot less of the stuff that I did in terms of ball handling that's cut down and it's really just maintaining that and really trying to always put myself in, you know, high tempo game situations during my workouts so I can translate it. But that's the physical part. I know kind of what I have to do. I got to be able to knock down open shots. So that's completely kind of flipped in my mind. I got to be able to hit that consistent, you know, three, um, step in and hit it. Whether I get two or three looks a game, I got to be hitting at a high clip. But I think more importantly, it's the mental switch. And I don't know if you want to talk about that. I would love to hear what your mental switch was after your sophomore year because of what you went through and then being like, okay, I got two years because that's where I'm at. I got two <coughs> years to make this, uh, you know, take advantage of this opportunity. No, for sure. Um, well, for me, uh, what, what did it for me was um, as a freshman, I was on draft boards. Um, mm -hmm. And then when I decided to transfer, I had to sit out. But uh, right before the season started, uh, some, another ranking came out. Um, and it had me on the draft board, too. It had me, like, I want to say it had me very high. And it had me, like, 17 or something. So yeah. my head is, is huge. So <laughs> yeah. after the sophomore year I had, um, I had it in my locker all year. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know who did it, but I came in one day and, like, it was it was out my locker. Like, Gone. It was out my locker. I don't know what coach saw it and was like, nah. It was out my locker. I go check. I'm nowhere to be found. So it's like I fell off the off the map. So my dad told me he's like, look, you got you got two options right now. My dad always looks at everything as glass half half full. So he's like, mm -hmm. you know, right now nobody knows about you. So if you have a a, a crazy year you know, you come out of nowhere. People that come out of nowhere always seem to do better than the people that are always on the mat. Yep. Okay, so, or, you know, you can fold. It's up to you. You know, I had one goal. It was always to put on an NBA jersey. So, yep. it really got down to, you know, am I going to really let this dream go away or am I going to fight with everything I got? What's the worst that can happen? You know, at the end of the day, you know, I got nothing to lose. I just had a horrible season. I'm not being talked about. People – forgetting about me he's not that good he's a bust this this and that so it's like I can't go no further than this I might as well throw hell to the wind and 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 go for what I know so I got in the gym that summer and my dad actually paid for me to go work out with a with an NBA trainer and all we talked about was mental 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 he's like man you got everything you need you know you got everything it's just mental you got to change it mentally and and you got to pick different focuses that you focus on so with that, it was like uh, a couple of things that we focused on was, so it was like, we just picked my best parts of my game and then we just tried to, you know, focus, focus, focus. Cause it's like, at the end of the day, you're gonna get paid for what you do great. You're not gonna get paid right. for what you don't do well. So at the end of the day, do what you do great and try to do that better than anybody. So that became my focus, okay? I want to own transition. Um, I felt like I was a great leader. I felt like I could get guys to play above and better than what they were so like those are a couple things that I focused on I knew I was a great mid-range shooter and I felt like I could hit that anytime I took it so I tried to constantly put myself in situations to get that shot um I became more of a student of the game uh, I remember coach Martin was the first coach to actually sit me down and show me the reads of a pick and roll you know if the if you come off here this man helps ball goes here if you see this man stunting you know, if you can see his jersey number, ball goes now. So just mix with all of that stuff, kind of uh, put a new focus and a new drive. It gave me, like, a sense of new goals to accomplish. And it kind of just refre uh, refreshed me a little bit. And that's, that's kind of what got me going. But if I'm you, the first thing I think of when I hear your name is great ball handler, great vision. Right. <clears throat> so if I'm you, that's what I'm trying to – Promote. Oh, focus, yeah. Scoring sure. scoring is great, and, and everybody loves to score. Right. But at the end of the day, when we're being honest, is a team going to take you more? Is a team going to pay you to score or facilitate? Facilitate. Guys' perspectives get all blurred. Like, <laughs> you, you don't – there there's no reason, like you're saying, to – 
to put all your focus into an area that your primary goal <laughs> is to get to the professional level and they, they don't really right. value that in you because they got three, four other dudes that can put up 30 a game effortlessly, right? right. So right. they need somebody who finds those guys in the right positions. And that, that's what me and Hugs talked about coming into school was that that is what we we see from you um that's what you know the next level will see from you uh and if you really focus on that and I think at some point in my career that kind of got you know distorted however it is I was I was looking at your uh your highlights um uh, me and one of my guys was watching and I saw you come off a ball screen you split a ball screen through a no look to the corner mm -hmm. right on the dime I yeah. was like damn I run around we run it back I was like damn that's a tough pass like you don't realize how tough that is. Like, it's coaches in Europe it's that, is, that will sign you for that pass. Yep. It's like just running the show, and that's so valuable as a point yeah. guard, as six foot, you know. Yeah, knocking down the open shot is, is you know, that's a must. That's something yep. that, that, you know, to go to the next level, that's something that we all have to do at a at least a decent rate. But it's like you just got to – and this is something Hugs used to say to me, do what you do. Yeah. Do what you do. And if you just do what you do, at the end of the day, I mean, it's better to be – I remember NBA scout told me this a while back. He said, try to be great at one thing. Yeah. If you can – the NBA is full of guys that are great at one thing. Mm -hmm. You, the, the guys that are great at all the things are the, the KDs, the Browns, you know, so on. But the, yeah. most guys, Trevor Reza, he's in the league because he's a corner three specialist and a defender. Right. So they're not – caring about anything but he does besides corner threes and defense. So it's like, be great at making guys play harder than they normally play. Be great at getting guys' enthusiasm level at a different, you know, yeah. level to – or be, just be great at knowing what, what guy needs what. All right, Oscar is self-motivated, but Derek might be – and these are just, you know, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just talking. Yep. Derek might need – a pat on the butt. Jalen might need because he's coming off a year sitting out. You can't get on him as much. You gotta ease him into it. Ease him into Emmett, it. Yeah. It's time to go. You might have to snatch him. So you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like yep. it's a whole lot of different areas in the game, especially with your position, to get better at. That don't listen to the the people on IG. They want to see you score thirty. Everybody's yeah. not scoring thirty. No, right. Do what you do because that's going to add value to you. That would be yeah. my advice. No, no I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that, take that, and run with it. I mean, honestly, like I feel like I thought I was remotivated going in, coming off this, you know, crazy time where you know guys like us have more time than we've ever had, and I thought I was remotivated just coming off this call. Um, I'm sitting here thinking, man, this is this is what I needed. I mean, those couple things in terms of me personally uh, focusing on you know the ball screen aspect and dominating that one aspect of the game as well as also when guys walk in the gym, they know who's the, the motivator, the guy right. who's going to get people going on days where they don't want to be, you know, in there. And it's a three-hour practice, and we just got off, you know, Texas Tech, but we got to play in two days. Right. That, that's, that's what I'm going to completely key in on and, and lock in uh, for this season. Uh, the, the other thing coming into this call that I really wanted to talk to you about was your, your professional career. So bring me through – that, you know, a lot of WVU fans who are going to watch this kind of know. Uh, but if you got anything that they might not, just in terms of your journey and what you've learned so far uh, at both levels, you know, the league and, and uh, elsewhere. Uh, man, uh, I've learned so much just since I left college. It's crazy. Man, I've been around guys like Steph Curry, been around LeBron James, um, millions of pros. Jared Sullinger, Adrian Payne, um, Samaj Christian, uh, Kevin Jones, Devin E. Banks, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Um, and you just learn different things from different guys. But it's always about finding that one competitive edge, you know, just like watching the last dance. I'm pretty sure if you're a real competitor, everybody took something or is taking something from what Jordan said. And that's just mm -hmm. kind of what it is. As a pro, you bounce around. You play against so many different guys and with so many different guys and for so many different coaches that the biggest thing you can do is just be a sponge. If you come across a guy that's a vet in France and he's 37 now, but, you know, you hear through 
his years, he was great. You know, you pick his brain, figure out what you can learn, figure out what works. You might end up in Hungary playing with somebody. You know what I'm saying? You just take, take and take and take and you add and, you know, you just try to become a better version of yourself and outdo yourself every year. That's kind of how it is as a, as a pro. I mean, you don't have a lot of time to work on your game, but it's so, so it comes, it becomes fine pointing, you know, just trying to get better at one thing, trying to add one thing every summer. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's kind of how the pro game is. And for the business side, I would really just give advice more than kind of talk about it. I would just say, if you love the game of basketball, play the game of basketball for the love of the of the game. You know, don't ever let, you know, the business side overtake loving the game, you know. And, and I also say if you play the game for money, then play the game for money, you know, because yeah. there's different routes you can take. You know, there's yeah. a G League route that could be love of the game, not making much money. There's a South American route that could be I'm the only person on my team that actually works on my game. The other 10 have a job, but I'm making a lot of money. My right. league is terrible. My living situation is very bad. But when I come home, I got a pocket full of money. So it's like, yeah. understand what, what you're trying to do before you become a pro because that matters. And right. that's the best advice I would give for the business side of it. Where's, uh, where's been your favorite place to play outside of the state so far? Uh, my favorite place to play would probably be um, – Probably be Finland against popular belief, just because it was so Americanized over there. Like, it was. I didn't have to worry about learning a different language. I didn't have to worry about anything. You know, they're more familiar with our culture in the states than some of Americans are. So it was. It wasn't really an adjustment besides being cold. That was it. Is it colder than Ohio? Because it gets cold in Ohio. <laughs> no, nah, it's definitely. It's. Bro, I would class. I would classify. Finland is the North Pole, literally. Like, <laughs> you're, that's probably the coldest place on earth. That you're, nice talk, you're talking about. You're talking about where I'm from. That's Wisconsin territory. Sub zero, oh, yeah. negative thirty, wind chill, yeah, all that. Yeah, that's Finland. That's Finland for sure. And it's dark. It's dark at like, it's dark at like four p.m. three three thirty. It's, it's really, black. yeah, <laughs> and cold, raining. So yeah, it, the weather is crazy, but the people were great. The the league was good too. It was yeah, the league. When I first got there, it wasn't considered to be you know that competitive. But now it's it's a very respected league. You know, it's yeah. it's a good league over there now. Would you be willing to go like say this week? Because I know like Alex Ruoff just took off for Germany, I believe, right? Mm. Um, nah. No, <laughs> no, no absolutely way. not. <laughs> no way. But not really because of the basketball, but just I just had a son, so you know, right now I'm chilling. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm relaxing for a while, but yeah, like I said earlier, I've been, I've been out for three months, so I'm not I'm not really in the position to go for a one month contract right now. Jump on a team, yeah. Hey, congrats yeah. by the way. I did see Appreciate that. That's, that. that's awesome, man. Appreciate what's up? Uh, what's little man's name? Uh, he's a junior, but we call him Deuce. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I know a Deuce. I know a Deuce. Yeah, <laughs> I know I know a pretty good Deuce too. <laughs> yeah, maybe he'll be right up, uh, right up that alley. That, and you got a, a daughter, right? Yep, I got the best of both worlds right now, and I think I'm done. Actually, <laughs> I know I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Are they both gonna be hoopers? You think? What's up? Uh, I mean, I hope he does. I'm not too sure about my daughter, man. She's just she's all over the place. She likes soccer right now. So yeah, as long as she's doing something, I'm cool. And now that I got a son, I won't put any pressure on her. I, I couldn't yeah. guarantee that without a son, but yeah, we'll, hopefully. Yeah. That's good stuff. Maybe there will be a, you know, who knows in 2027 or 30, whatever. I don't know what the graduating class, maybe there'll be another WVU uh, deuce running around. Hey. Hey, that, it's it's a strong possibility of that. Yeah. I'll tell you that now. It's a strong possibility. I'm sure fans. I'm sure WVU fans are gonna be going crazy once they hear that. For sure. You know, when I was coming through, I didn't have a guy to to reach out to me. You know, I was always yeah. trying to, and I was shy. You know, I, I didn't really want to. I didn't feel comfortable reaching out to people. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just extending that that welcome right now. You know, anything yeah. I could do to help especially with these last two years. I'm all about WVU, and, um, yeah. you know, I'm all about helping anybody I can help. You know, like I said, I didn't have that. So reach out to me whenever um, and, uh, you know, pick my brain, whatever. I, whatever I can do to help, and uh, you got my word. 
Yeah. I, hey, man, I really appreciate that. And I, I'm I'm definitely not shy. So if I ever get annoying and be like, yo, bro, you can only hit me up from this time to this time. You're getting crazy. But I'm going to – I'm definitely going to use that uh, and uh, pick your brain as much as I can, especially after hearing, you know, the stages that you went through here. And I appreciate you uh, hopping on here with me. For sure, man. Hit me up anytime.